in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm going to read that one more time. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I want my message to tie in with the theme of this year. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. It shall come to pass. It shall come to mm -hmm. pass. All right. My brothers and sisters, Luke, the beloved physician, theologically known as one of the three synoptic Luke writers Edwards. and one of the four gospel writers, is the author and narrator of this particular book called The Acts of the Apostles. When you examine the gospel according to Luke's writing, you will see that Luke records what Jesus began to do on these terrestrial shores. But when you meticulously navigate through the book of Acts, you will see that Acts is a continuation of what the Holy Spirit would do through us on this side of heaven. That's why in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, it emphatically declares to us, we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. And many of us know that the word power in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8 means dunamis. And the word dunamis means dynamite. So we that have the Holy Ghost power, we have the dunamis dynamite power to blow up whatever it is that the devil has designed for our manifold. And may I pose here parenthetically an actual question early in my message. Is there anybody in here that know without hesitation and without reservation that you have the dunamis dynamite power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you? When you wanted to do things that were contrary to the will of God, it was the dunamis dynamite power of the Holy Ghost that kept you in the center of his will. When you came to church and Sister Dora, the explorer, and Mr. Alvin, the chief monk, said something to you when you did nothing to him, it was the power of the Holy Ghost that kept you from knocking the heaven out of them. Uh, I've come to find out since I've uh, been saved and in the church that most of the time it's not the person that we sit beside that we have the issue with. It's usually the person that's sitting across the aisle. So I want you to look across the aisle and say, neighbor, yeah. you better be glad. You better be glad. I've got the Holy Ghost. Because I would have got you a long time ago. So it is, so it is, so it is. So it is Luke in this particular text. The text begins to tell us that Luke is documenting the first miracle performed by the apostles since the spirit baptism at Pentecost in Jerusalem. And he begins his discourse like this, with two spirit-filled apostles headed into the temple about the hour of prayer, which is the ninth hour. But the ninth hour in our time is three o'clock in the afternoon. But before entering into the temple, there was this gate called Beautiful. And at Beautiful, the gate, there lay this certain man daily yes, yes, asking yes. for money from the people that was entering into the temple for prayer. One reason that he asked them for money was because this man knew that it was customary that whenever you went into the house of prayer, that you didn't go without a monetary gift. That speaks to us that we should never just come into the church with a sacrifice of praise. But how many of y'all know that the word of God is free, but to deliver it, it takes finances. It takes finances for us to keep the lights on. It takes finances for us to heat the building. It takes finances to kill, to uh, cool the building off in the summertime. Tell somebody it takes money. So it is. But, but when you read the beginning of verse number two, it also informs us that this man was asking for money because he had a lame condition. Understand this before we go any further. I mentioned to you earlier that Luke was known as the beloved physician. So Luke was a doctor by profession. And when you read this inscription, or perhaps that you have to go visit your own doctor, there are two words that I want you to remember. The first one is diagnosis. D-I-A-N... D-I-G-N-O-S-I-S. Diagnosis is when the doctor tells you what your condition is. The second one is prognosis. P-R-O-G-N-O-S-I-S. Prognosis, this is when the doctor tells you what your outlook or your outcome could be. So Dr. Luke begins to diagnose and record that this man laid at the gate again daily because he was lame from his mother's womb. The word lame means that one or both of this man's limbs were disabled. And Luke's diagnosis from his mother's womb suggests that he had a congenital disability. Yes, the word congenital yes. means that it exists 
existed from birth. And if you read in verse number 7 of Acts chapter 3, you will see in the latter part, 